What is up, everyone? This is another episode of Crazy Fitness Guy Healthy Living Podcast slash weekly live stream. And I have to say, uh, I am so sorry for being late, but uh, I was, I've been helping one of my friends out with technology. Uh, let's just say um, it kind of went well and it sort of didn't went well. I don't know how, how that happens, but whatever. Uh, so uh, I want, uh, so again, sorry for being late. Uh, I want to, before I introduce my guest to you, that you probably has, has showed, saw a sneak peek on the screen. Shh, don't tell anyone. Uh, my, uh, so if you want to uh, follow this uh, live stream and everything, you can go to, you can watch this live stream on Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, and Daily Motion when it's uploaded to Daily Motion. Uh, I used to be able to stream right to it, but of course, Daily Motion changed their guidelines. Stop it, Daily Motion. Um, sorry, that's my rant for today. I promise. Maybe. Um, and uh, you can follow Crazy Fitness Guy on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Crazy Fitness Guy. And if you want to follow me, you can follow me at Jimmy Claire Speaker on Facebook and Instagram, and Jimmy Claire Speak on Twitter. And when this podcast goes live, uh, it will go uh, on my podcast. Uh, it will go on Apple, Google, Spotify, and every single platform out there. Uh, I hope. <laughs> I'm kidding. It will, but if you don't, if you can't find it, I'll put it on, uh, the podcast on that platform. But just let me know which platform, and it will be done instantly. Um, uh, I mean, uh, at least on my end. I don't know about the company's end. Uh, and uh, if you like this live stream, please share it with your followers and your and uh, your friends, family, uh, etc. And please leave me uh, leave us a review. And now let me introduce my wonderful guest today, uh, J.R. Reed is a uh, autism advocate and a motivational speaker and he's uh he's just, we're going to talk about everything about autism today uh because i think it's because i'm i'm autistic and he's autistic and i think uh yeah and yeah, it's funny even though that i'm autistic i'm also i'm most I'm always learning something new about autism, and I'm always willing to learn something new that I don't know. And I learned the other day from someone that follows me on Twitter that uh, the uh, autism community community does not like the uh, uh, oh the the puzzle piece anymore. So maybe we, that can will come up in a conversation today. Uh, so. Please welcome my guest, J.R. Reed. Hey, Jimmy. Hey, how you doing? Good. How are you? Good. You know, speaking of the puzzle piece, I actually a couple months ago wrote a blog post. Can we get rid of the damn puzzle piece? Wow. Oh, so, yes, so, we can definitely talk about that. Perfect. Because, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, it's funny, like, I actually, like, I was, I used the puzzle piece in, in a few of my uh, bios on social media, and, you know, I always thought it was, it meant to uh, be a connected community, uh, but now that this person actually said on Twitter, they said to me that uh, they want to differentiate themselves, the autism community wants to di differentiate themselves from the uh, yeah. autism speaks. Uh, oh, did I say that bad? That sounds like a bad word when I say it too. It, it, it does, but you know what? It, it It's actually one of my highlights of my life. I've been banned on Twitter, by blocked on Twitter by autism speaks. Perfect. Uh, and someone actually, someone actually created a, a little badge uh, icon that said blocked by AS. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. The middle of the, of the line through it. 
<laughs> okay, so uh, before we get, dive into all that awesome, amazing stuff, I, I mean, should we even say that's awesome or amazing stuff? Yeah. Because I think I think that's like a goal of itself to be banned from Autism Speaks. Uh, well, but you know, you, you've got to look at an organization and where they've come from and and what they've done with their money. You know, Autism Speaks spent so many millions of dollars of donated money looking for a cure for something that they already knew was genetic and could it be cured. So basically they just spent their money on garbage. Yeah, and they're still doing new projects, but there's always research involved in that. And you've got to wonder with their history, where is that research going? Nowhere land. Well, I mean, it, it, it could still be, you know, there's, they've stated now that they're not looking for a cure, but their history shows that that's what they've done most of their existence. And who knows and, if, there's, if they're working on something behind the scenes. Yeah. And uh, so let's take a step back. And uh, before we get dive into any more juicy stuff, uh, let's, so uh, can you tell me a little bit about who you are, what you do, and... Yeah. Well, I was diagnosed at age 46 because I was out of high school for about 13 years before they started diagnosing kids with autism, before they even knew what autism was. And it took another few years for them to come up with Asperger's. And I went through my uh, school years being called weird, stupid, and lazy by my teachers, being told that I would never reach my potential, that I couldn't reach my potential. Um had a boss who for 10 years called me Forrest Gump every day. And, you know, I, I just didn't know why I didn't fit in. But when I finally got diagnosed at age 46, it was like the heavens opened up and I had an epiphany. And I said on the way out to the car, I'm not weird, just autistic. And that then would become my website and kind of the basis of everything I've done as far as writing and speaking, um, with my two books that I've got at the publisher right now, uh, waiting for, uh, to come out. And yeah, you know what, we're, we're just us. And while I hated all the experiences that I went through most of my life, I honestly believe that they've made me into the self-advocate that I am. I, I can relate to a lot of that. Uh, I've been, I've been called, uh, I've been told that uh, people call me weird. They told me I had a big head. Uh, uh, I didn't. I'm sorry. What 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 does a big head have to do with autism? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> again, I, I didn't ask any of them why they called told me I had a big yeah. head for. Uh, I didn't want to find out either. Uh, but but they told me. Yeah, I had doctors who told me I was not going to uh, be able to read higher than a second grade level. I'm in college now. Um, I would like to say I would love to meet those doctors again. Oh, you know what? The, the journalism teacher in high school that told me to stop taking journalism class because I'd never write. I'd really not like to have a talk with her. I spent 20 years as a freelance writer writing for national magazines and newspapers. So, so suck that. <laughs> so what would you, uh, so if he had the uh, opportunity to go back to his, see some of these people, what would you say to them, uh, to all those naysayers? Well, I, I try to remember, I really do that they told me all these things before people knew what autism was. That being said, there's still no reason to say those kind of things to anybody, period. Um, I'd love to go back to my algebra teacher in high school and my journalism teacher in high school and show them what I've done and what I've been able to do. And even though they said I couldn't do things, uh, there's a certain English teacher from my high school that was just not nice to me at all. And I'd, lo I'd love to go back and, and talk to her. Yeah, that's funny. Um, I, I knew we were going to connect very well. We were going to connect 
uh, very well on this podcast because you know I had an English uh, teacher in, in uh, high school as well that we did not connect at all. We bu- we basically bumped heads every single time, uh, not physically, but we always just were literally just at each other. I kid mm-hmm. you not, uh, I we had to read this book in twelfth grade. Uh, I forget what the book was. It was probably because it was that terrible. I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys, if it was memorable, I probably would like. I, I would like literally do a whole podcast of it, but I don't even remember what the name was. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so she had this. She always quizzed us and test us on what happened in the book and whatnot. And what's funny, uh, one of the questions on the study guide was not even in the book. And so I was just in my study hall. I finished all my homework uh, the night before. So I I, I was able to just like read whatever I want to do in study hall. Mm -hmm. She comes walking by my study hall room, sticks her head in, is like, Jimmy, you're not studying. It's like, I got, I'm prepared, I'm finished and everything. I just can't answer this one question. So she comes right in and she's like, well, it's in the book. Did you see it in the book? And it's like, it's not in the book. She's like, yes, it's in the book. How do you think I got the questions? And it's like, trust me, it's not in the book. She made me, uh, she made me watch her flip through every single page of the book. And by the time when study hall was over, she's like, you're right, it's not in the book. Well, thanks for wasting my time. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And by the way, to answer your question earlier, how do you think she came up with the questions? Probably from the teacher's version of the book. Probably, and I don't think. Yeah, I... she she didn't make them up. She just read whatever they wrote. <laughs> yeah, and probably the and that one question probably was not even on there. <laughs> probably was not yeah. even on the teacher's version either. Yeah, probably not. But who knows? If it's not in the book, how do you come up with that question? You know, speaking of teachers, one thing that I'd really like to see, and I think would would help going forward, is a lot of people on the spectrum going into teaching. Really? Because, I mean, you and I can connect on an autistic level because we're going to speak the same language and and think the same way. Now, how about having an autistic special ed teacher? How awesome would that be? That would be awesome. I mean, one that could connect with the kids on that level and not be a neurotypical, just going off book knowledge. True. I I, I think that would be, just be awesome, and I, I encourage more more kids or more people to go into teaching that are on the spectrum. I think I think that would be kind of an inter- an interesting. Uh, uh, I, I think that would be very interesting to see. Um, uh, I. I don't know. Yeah, I, I could see that. I, uh, uh, but I, I think it would have to be someone like someone like like you and me who can like have a uh, conversational type. Like, I mean, you know how like uh, some people on the spectrum might might not be able to have a continual conversation and whatnot, and but it had to be someone. Like some, I, I hate to use the word higher functioning because it, 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 oh, it, I, I know where you're coming from. I, I hate higher functioning and lower functioning too, but in the end, that's probably the best way to describe where somebody falls on the spectrum. So, um, in your opinion, what would some of what do you think needs to be changed about? Uh, people's outlooks on autism? Well, I, I think they need to learn what autism really is on a daily basis, um, what it's like to be an autistic person. And in fact, I was going to talk to you later, but what the heck, I'll talk to you now. Um, I'm going to start doing a show much like yours, but it's going to be called 24 Hours in the Real World of Autism. And I'm going to have people on, we're going to talk about different aspects of being actually autistic. Um, for example, one of the first episodes I want to have is going to be about health. I want to get you, 
I want to get an autistic uh, advocate that I know from the Netherlands who works with girls who are anorexic and bulimic and autistic. And I also want to get a nutritionist on there and just, you know, so we can talk about all aspects of health, you know, from an autistic perspective. I, awesome. But I would love to be able to. Uh, you'll, you'll be right there. You will get notified as soon as it's ready to go. Um, yeah. But I, I think what people need to realize is that our brains are wired a little bit differently, but we can still do the same things. It's like we're Max in a PC world. You know, we speak a different language, but we can still get the job done. So it, it's like, it's literally like those old uh, com those computer commercials, that PC and Mac guy, and they're all, uh, on their TV commercials, yeah. they say, hey, I'm PC and I'm Mac, and they're, they're yeah. always buttheads, and, and Mac yep. always trying to, is like, yeah, we're better than PC, well, and well, I don't think they can promote that commercial anymore. <laughs> Oh, you, know what? you know what? Again, but you know, again, take it to that level. There are certain things that Macs are great for. If you're doing video, if you're doing any kind of editing, you know, like that, they're great for that. PCs are not so great at that, but they're better at other things. So they're good at like uh, I think PCs are really great for multitasking, and they also yeah. are good for uh, some for gaming as well. Uh, exactly. Like I even tried playing a, a game on uh, my Mac when I first had one. It was the worst experience I ever used in my life because, because you know how computers can sometimes get hot. Well, Macs are metal and made of metal and everything. Well, yeah. I had let's just say in the summer times, my hands were sweaty on my computer, and okay. in the winter it was it felt like. It, Hmm, my hands are nice and warm and everything. And and I kind of, it, it kind of got so warm, I kind of literally cooked breakfast on my uh, Mac. You know what? Uh, over easy, please. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think they should put them in one of those commercials. It's like, hey, you know, if you're hungry, just put an egg on your computer and it will be fried up the way you want it to be scrambled sunny side up yeah. <laughs> maybe more people yeah. will buy who knows <laughs> you, you look at it while you're doing your you know your computer work why not exactly too lazy too tired getting up and then cooking yourself just cook it right here in front of your computer <laughs> exactly uh, you know, going on, the other thing I think I'd really like people to know is that we are not broken neurotypicals, that we're perfectly created autistic people, and that there's nothing wrong with us. I like that. They, um, you know, I have, you know, one of the, my friend I was telling you about, uh, that I was helping out yesterday, uh, she, she loves to use this uh, quote that, that the, the only thing that is normal is the setting on the uh, washing machine. Yeah, like, pretty much. Yeah, I was like, there's nothing else is normal. And, and it's like, the whole world is not normal. It's like, no one is the same. Everyone has, everyone is different. Everyone has a, a different background, a, a different history, et cetera. I'm not gonna get into any of the specifics because oh. that's not the, what the show is about. <laughs> I mean, normal is, you know, from a perspective, it's it's racial, it's cultural, it's, you know, I, mean, I grew up in Long Beach, California, which is in the LA area, and it's a fairly large city, and even within the city, there were different neighborhoods where, that had different normals. So I, I think normal is all relative. Yeah. And just like you said, it, it's a setting. Yeah. yeah, for me, like I always say, normal is not in my dictionary. There's, uh, and you know, even picture this like, computers are not normal. Everything is different on, you know, each computer has its own, uh, like the power buttons on is different 
uh, on every single yeah. computer. My uh, my mom's uh, computer, she it's literally next to uh, like on top near the top of the keyboard. Mine is mm -hmm. on the side of my computer. Someone else is on the left side. Mine is on the right side. Uh, yeah. It's so weird. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, for me, normal is having a purple goatee and the word Asperger's tattooed across my forearm. That's not normal for you, but that's okay. You got your normal. I got mine. Well, I think, well, you, you know, I don't think I, well, one, I can't ever get a tattoo or my, my mom would never talk to me again. Um, I don't know if that would be a curse or a blessing. Um, I, I actually thought the same thing before I got my first one and she's still talking to me. Although um, the other day, she said something about a uh, class uh, from her high, small high school in Nebraska using a Trump from uh, a quote from Trump as their class motto. And I made the comment that could go really well or that could go really poorly, depending on which quote they use. And she said, if you want to be a liberal Democrat communist, go ahead. Like, uh, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> All I said was, and, and I think every Republican. A Democrat would agree. He said some very smart things, and he said some very stupid things. Just yeah. like we all do. Just like we all do. And all I said was the quote could go really poorly or really well, depending on what they chose. Exactly. And, like, uh, I know from my, for me, um, I just, well, I mean, my mom literally uh, uh, straight up told me that you you won't be uh, living in the house, or you won't be, uh, and I'll, I won't talk to you if you have a, a a tattoo. So I was like, okay, I'm not getting a tattoo. And plus, I heard them uh, really, really painfully. So I, I really, I don't like depends on, depends on where in the body you do it. Yeah. And I, I'm not a person who can tolerate pain at all. I'm uh, if I feel pain, I'm like. Okay, I need to go physical therapy, or I'm <laughs> uh, I'm not one of those people who can just say, oh, it, it will go away. If if, yeah. it's, if it's affecting my brain and it, I can start feeling it over and over again, it's like, okay, time to go see a doctor. Yeah, well, I played recreational ice hockey for 25 years, and uh, this immobilizer right here is part of the result of it. And I'm just the opposite, where I can tolerate the pain. And I can actually convince myself that it's fine. It's just a, a muscle bruise or something like that. I can keep playing. Well, now I've got arthritis in most of my joints. I've had triple rotator cuff surgery, six bone spurs shaved down, two bones in my shoulder rebroken because they they were broken. And I convinced myself I was fine. And they did hit, go back together properly. And now I just had single rotator cuff surgery again. Um, in a spot, only three to four percent of the people tear their rotator cuff. So, my uh, my orthopedic surgeon was pretty impressed. That sounds brutal. Yeah, he must really like you. Oh, he, he does. He said that his two favorite, uh, two of his favorite MRIs are of my two shoulder surgeries. You know, you know, I can I can just picture it right now that you that your doctor is going to take those uh, X rays and frame them and then put it in his office. Oh, oh hey, <laughs> yeah, no, uh, I actually went in to see him for my first appointment for this this surgery, and he had uh, a student or an intern or somebody, uh, you know, going to be a doctor that was trailing him, and he said a couple of things and the student actually said, Oh wait, is this the guy? <laughs> yes, I am. You become a famous. <laughs> yep. No, uh, yeah. so, uh, I showed the MRI of my road of my shoulder to my uh, chiropractor the first time I had the surgery. And she said, Oh my God, how can you even move your arm? <laughs> uh, I don't know, but I don't have a good range of motion. <laughs> The, the the I think the only thing that I've broken so far uh, was my left arm, and that wasn't even my fault. I fell down in recess uh, when I was in elementary school, and we were, we were playing uh, basketball on the uh, on the hard pavement, 
and yeah. some kid stepped on my uh, arm, and it's and I heard the big snap, and it's like, ouch. Yep. Broken my foot four times. Walking a puck. So I can relate all four times. I knew I broke it as soon as, as soon as that puck hit it. Oh, there um, we go. Uh, so uh, what do you um, do you ever feel like that your autism has ever hold you back on certain different tasks? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you know, I'm not so great with a lot of social interactions and crowds, um, things like that. So, you know, it's, it, I've, I've got bad social anxiety. So speaking live in front of 1500 people, you know, you've got to really work to overcome that. You know, um, it is something that held me back for a long time. Um, and when I started advocating, I really held back a lot of things in the beginning because I was afraid. And, and there are things that I'm still afraid of. I was afraid of writing the two books, even though I've been a writer for 30 years. Um, I'm afraid of starting this new web project, though I know I'm going to do it. It's going to be fine. I, I still have that natural fear that we do, you know, especially as autistic people, I think, thinking, are people going to look at it and go, oh, that's, you know, it, it's, it's bad just because he's autistic? Or is it just bad because I'm not good at doing it? I know how you feel on that. Uh, every time when I uh, do this weekly live stream, I always feel like, is people going to watch? Is people going to make fun of this live stream? Uh, is people going to like it, tune into it? Um, hey, if, if they ever give you crap about it, just send them my way. Uh, will do. Um, but but there was a, and I also feel like I also I also had I was also having a lot of doubts when I was first doing it because when I when I first tried it, I think about like a, a year ago, I guess, yeah, a few months ago maybe I don't I forget, but like when I first tried it. Uh, I just didn't have everything set up the way I wanted to, and I didn't know a few settings that would make my life easier. But then when I went back into it again, after being away for for a few months and just continued the old-fashioned method of using Zoom, no offense, yeah. Zoom, I didn't mean you're old or anything. But yeah. uh, uh, but when I found out that, that uh this tool I'm using Restream, they have a schedule tool to schedule out this stuff. I'm like, well, this is interesting. I didn't know that this that this could do what I needed to do. And I was like, if I only knew that the first time around, I would have <laughs> it would save me a lot of headache. Exactly. No, I, I think a lot of us doubt ourselves because we've been looked at so negatively most of our lives. You know, the medical model of autism talks about all the things we can't do. We have problems with social interactions. We have problems with communication. You know, we have deficits in processing and sensory issues. Well, those aren't necessarily all bad. They're just different and we can find workarounds for a lot of them. Yeah, I'm gonna tell this story real quick. There's, when I was younger, I, I, if it's hard for me to talk to my own peers, I, I, I can talk to some grown-ups, uh, but but uh, I always felt like other kids my age uh, never really got me or understood who I was. Mm -hmm. uh, and what's funny though, uh, I used to be a shy at a lot of parties, uh, but over the years when I started this showing up more and more and more and more parties and whatnot. I started, and when I got older, I started to be, be able to work the whole room. I got to talk to everyone in the person in the room at least like once or twice. And so, and I just kept on going around the room over and over again. And I got to all the uh, people around my age 
and and I was like, this is amazing. I literally worked the whole room, and I, I can even be in a group setting, and I can make the whole table laugh, which I was like, this is amazing. I can I can't believe I did this. Yeah, you know, you're better when they're laughing with you and not at yeah. you. But oh, it, they, you no, know. they weren't laughing at me. They were just <laughs> laughing. If they were laughing at me, I'd probably be underneath the table. Exactly. I, I always said, you know what? I don't really care if you laugh with me or if you laugh at me, as long as you, you know, are laughing. Then I thought about. It, I said, no, nah, no, nah, I, I don't like laughing at me. <laughs> we we can take that one off the table. You know, I only laugh at myself <laughs> if it's by myself. But I'm not gonna laugh at myself in front of others just to make other people feel better or whatnot. Uh, yeah. I don't think I will get that far. Um, so what do you, so in your opinion, um, what, how come do you don't like uh, Autism Speaks? Simply because of the fact that they spent so many years looking for a cure for something they knew wasn't curable. Had they spent that money on other things, I mean, programs for adults, for example, you know, there's no, you know, this, Jimmy, once you leave high school now, there, there's nothing for you to help you as an autistic adult. All the money goes towards kids, which is great, but it sucks to be an adult that when nobody really has your back other than other people on the spectrum. Sounds about right. Yeah. So I, I, I actually got blocked by them for repeatedly tweeting autism speaks not for me how long did that take you to get blocked by them uh probably a year and a half hmm. i want to see, I wonder and, if I see that record and those, those weren't the only tweets no oh, i mean it took them that long to block me oh. i've been blocked for a while Oh, well, I mean, I wonder if it, I, I wonder if I could beat that record of being okay. blocked sooner than that. If you tweet more often than I do, you probably would. <laughs> oh, you know, I, I, I have a lot of scheduled posts out there, and uh, but I tweet um, multiple times a day, so you know, you know, I actually saw an article uh, written by either someone in the community or or by them that literally pointed a whole long list of uh, stuff people can't do being autistic. And I, I said, just because the data shows uh, that we can't do something doesn't mean that's what's written in stone for us. Right, right. Well, you know what? I mean, just like they say that we have problems with communication. Well, Jimmy, do you communicate fairly well with other autistic people? Yeah, I I, com okay. I communicate very well with uh, other people, uh, with just people in general. Uh, yeah. If people strike up a conversation with me on the street or or even uh, or or just in any setting whatsoever, I won't. I probably won't shut up because I'm very talkative. Right, right. but I mean. So you're you're comfortable with talking to autistic people, and a lot of neurotypical people aren't comfortable talking to autistic people, but they're very comfortable talking to other neurotypical people. It's just our brains are wired differently. You know, we communicate in different ways. You figured out a way to get around that and to communicate very well with neurotypical people, and that's awesome. You know, that's what we have to do. We have to find workarounds or patch jobs or whatever you want to call it in order to overcome these things that they call our deficits. And what, what's funny about the, about um, when I uh, when I uh, I remember the when we were doing that panel with uh, our friend Lauren. He yep. uh, he said uh, I remember when uh, when I first heard you saying you got uh, ban uh, banned on uh, Autism Speaks uh, Twitter page. I, I had, to, I, like, I was kind of just laughing at, at, at just that because I was like, you know, if if this company, uh, 
I, it just kind of shows you that a company uh, or the organization doesn't, uh, uh, they don't like people who disagree with, disagree with them. And uh, they just can't handle the fact that uh, the autism community doesn't stand with them anymore. Right. right. Exactly. Exactly. But, you know, hey, they obviously don't want to look at the feedback that's coming in and find a better way to do things. They're comfortable just taking our money. Well, not my money. They've never got a dime for me. They yeah. <laughs> never will. <laughs> they take people's money and do with it what they want not listening to what we as artistic people are suggesting they could better use the money for yeah you know some of my um like one of my uh, mentors said to me i was like maybe it's like maybe we can do a talk uh, at their convention or or whatever to, and persuade them and it's like I might never ever be invited back to speak there, <laughs> if ever. Yeah. Okay. I, I've got, you know, on, I've got on my list, you know, places that I've spoken before and groups that I've spoken to. Autism Speaks will never be on that list because they will never invite me. If they did, I would definitely say yes. And it would be fun. But yeah. they, they would never ask me. I probably would. If they invited me to speak at one of their conventions, I'll give them a really good convention, but they probably won't want me to come back. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Because, you know, what money needs, and, and not just Autism Speaks, for all groups, there needs to be money spent on how to improve our lives. You know, things that can help us. And not just looking at our deficits and trying to research this and research that. I mean, the research is great, but, you know, let's do something to help us. I mean, over 80% of autistic adults are unemployed or underemployed. We're eight times more likely to have mental health issues. And I think a lot of that is because of the environment. I mean, that's, I, I can tell you from experience, my anxiety and my depression both come from hearing all the things I, I've heard through my life, that I was weird, that I was stupid, that I was lazy, that I would never live up to my potential, Forrest Gump, all of that has contributed to my mental health. As a, yeah, I think that would might cause everyone to have those kind of. I think that would affect everyone's mental health. Like I know for oh, myself. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. And, and I think for myself, it's like, you know, I I finally started blocking all the news sources on my news feed on uh, Google News, etc. Just because uh, it's not that I'm living under a rock, but, you know, I'm tired of listening to coronavirus this, coronavirus that, coronavirus this, or this person yeah. got uh, this person got punched in the face for doing absolutely nothing. And it's like, you know, you know, I, I don't need to listen to all the negativity. You know, I want to listen to something that will build me up or uh, or move me into the right direction of my career or, or whatnot, or, uh, or listen or uh, watch a video game trailer. And you know, I used to think yeah. uh, I need to stay on top of the news. I have my parents to tell me what's going on if I need to. They they talk about it like so many times. I'm like, gee, I don't even I, I don't even need the news. I got my news in my house. And it's like, here, give me the most, give me like 15 seconds of the news. There, got it all done in one day. <laughs> yep. There's my 24 hour news. <laughs> Let me go to some uh, news website. Just quickly scan the headlines. Now I got an idea what's going on. On to the next page. <laughs> yeah, and even if I can't even block the, that source or or news because I just don't want to hear it or share a few articles like it, I, I just scan the head page and it's like, yep, yeah, I got I got the synopsis. Don't need it. <laughs> yeah. Like gone. I don't even need to read the whole article. <laughs> yep. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, what yeah. are you gonna do, right? Yeah, like for me, I'm just trying to keep my mental health sane. 
Uh, exactly. And yeah, aren't we all? Yeah. So um, before we, uh, so what do you, so when you uh, speak to people on uh, stages and and on other platforms and writing stuff, what do you like to write about and talk about? Um, I, I write a lot about things that happen in everyday life that, um, well, for example, I just wrote a post called everyone or every autistic person has a Josh in their life. And I talk about just a few years ago, someone who I became friends with, pretty good friends with. We talked a lot about my autism and depression and anxiety and stuff like that. And then one day out of the blue, we were meeting for coffee. He hands me a list of like 15 or 16 reasons that he can no longer be my friend. And when I sh showed that list to both my psychiatrist and psychologist, they're like, two of these are just straight up asinine. The rest are all autistic traits. I said, oh, I'm very aware of that. <laughs> but every autistic person has somebody in their life who has been a friend and then dumped them just for being autistic. That's so wrong. No, it is. It is. So, I mean, I read about stuff like that and I, I always r remind them that, Hey, this is just my story. Everybody's got their own story. You know, I'm not saying I was treated any worse than anybody else, but this is just my story. Now let's hear your story. And, you know, trying to get people to look at what it's really like to be an autistic person. Because we can do the basics of autism like we did on that panel that day. But, you know, what's it really like on a daily basis to be autistic? Yeah, I, I definitely try to do the same thing on my uh, website a little bit. I mean, not the same thing as you, but I try to try and, like, you know, I had a post. Um, I, t I call it like uh, the problems with being autistic. And I'm not saying like, okay, it's like a problem to live with. I'm just saying there's some problems with like, okay, yeah, you know, it's hard to make friends and whatnot. But you know, some, somehow magically I, I've i got a, a big group of friends that are very close to me. Yeah. And, and I'm really grateful for all of them. It is like, I can't tell you on how how it happened for each friend of mine because as I I don't exactly remember it just they showed up and we just ki ki like hit it off and it's like that didn't sound like it sounds like I'm like I'm hitting on them or something I don't know. Uh, hey, do your thing. <laughs> it's Friday. Just go with it. Uh, okay. It's been a long week. Uh, That's right. Oh, it has been. So we, uh, so yeah, it's like I have a lot. I have a lot of. I have a big close group of friends, and that I, it, uh, and I message them uh, a lot uh, mm -hmm. daily, or sometimes weekly or monthly, and we just catch up and whatnot. And you know. It, and I, I'm lucky for everyone in my life, and they're all in, the, in my life for a reason. And uh, and I don't have one best friend. They're all my best friends. They um, uh, literally, there's not one person on my friends list that's not my. I mean, not on Facebook. But I mean, like they're all all of my contacts on my and my phone are all of my best friends yep no one say uh, and the reason why i say all my best friends because they are, are all my best friends they're not like oh uh, there's only one person who's my the, the best friend is like nope all my best friends <laughs> only one room yeah. for, for everything <laughs> exactly exactly Oh, I'm gonna just like well, losing count of who's who anymore. Like, no, this is my true best. No, 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 <laughs> can't do it. Exactly. exactly. Yeah, it's tough being us sometimes, isn't it? Yeah, I, I always have to categorize something for everyone. It's like, okay, um, like, like for me, 
I, I'm a Google calendar. I have multiple calendars for <laughs> for different mm -hmm. things, doctors, uh, and uh, uh, because if I don't do that, everything just gets mixed up. And like I kid you not, there's one day I was um, I forget what I was doing, and my mom told me, "He's like, Jimmy, you have a dentist appointment today. Don't you remember?" Now I do. <laughs> yeah. I was like, "Nope, I have no idea." Yeah. And I, I'm the type of person who knows that I have a doctor's appointment and checks his phone four times that day to make sure he knows what time the doctor's appointment is, even though I already do. But I get a long CD sometimes, and I'm like, okay. I mean, the last thing I do before I go to bed at night is check the calendar on my phone and see what I've got going on the next day. If there's anything early or anything that I need to be prepared for before I go to bed. And that's why I have a lot of reminders from my calendar and my to-do list just to make sure as I get this done. It's like, and, and it's like sometimes a notification gets, gets me in that annoyed. It's like, okay, I'm crossing you off the other day. Ah. And, uh, yeah. and and some of them just get like really aggravating and they tell me, it's like, you must get this done. It's like, okay, be quiet. Me notification. Yeah, exactly. Especially exactly. when it interrupts your podcast as well <laughs> yeah yeah which has happened i just shut my phone off completely when i'm doing something like this i put mine on silent no nah, well i don't put mine on silent because i did that one time and it still rang so so now i just don't trust it i turn it off completely <laughs> you stay shush phone I even yeah. tell my phone this day, shush. Yeah. Uh, so uh, before we wrap up, uh, do you have any last few words you want to share with people? Um, again, just you know, reminder that we're not broken. Uh, we're perfectly good as we are. Don't ever let anybody tell you that you can't do something because some of the greatest minds in the world um, Thomas Edison, um, I mean, different writer, Mark, different writers, um, musicians, people in technology, Einstein, you know, all on the spectrum. So Elon don't Musk. let people tell you what you can do. What? Elon Musk. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, but I mean, again, he's a big technology guy, you know? Yeah. And I mean, People might have told him when he was younger he can't do things, but he kept going and he kept trying. And I don't know how many businesses he had that failed before Tesla and SpaceX, but, you know, he failed and he kept trying. Yeah, and, and now he is a billionaire. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So don't don't ever let anybody talk down to you for being autistic. Um and just be happy and, and proud of who you are and the way you are. Yeah. Or, you know, yeah. don't let anybody, yeah. don't let anybody, yeah. like, and don't even let anybody tell you that you can't call you, that you can't call you. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Sorry, drinking tea. So, uh, before, uh, uh, not weird, just autistic.com. Yes, that is a lot of letters. I apologize. Um, from there, you can find uh, links to different uh, things like this that I've done. Um, you can find links to my social media, to my Facebook, and my Twitter. You can see stuff that I've written, uh, upcoming events, and pretty much anything else. Awesome. Uh, awesome. Awesome. Uh, so, so, I'm on a big echo. I'm on a big echo. Uh, oh, right. Uh, so, for anybody so, who for anybody, uh, 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 wants to follow me, uh, again, me, again, me, Jimmy, Chris, Big Red, Jimmy, Chris, Big Red, the Facebook. Facebook. Jimmy Clare speak on Twitter. Speak on Twitter. And you can follow Chris. Yeah. Uh, 
Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, 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 and Google and Spotify. Google and Spotify. When, it when it comes out. It comes out. It comes out. So, so if you like this episode, please uh, rate this episode with your friends, your family. And that's all for today. That's all for today. Thanks. Uh, for being hey, here. Hey, thank you, Jimmy. It was fun. Totally. It was, it was a good time. And we're going to do this again on my show. Awesome. Uh, awesome. And uh, I hope you, you will come back as a guest on my show in the future. Yep. Me too. Thank you. You're welcome.